Okay, so we see the journey from Africa to Europe and through the Middle East, etc., was longer ago than we think, and the fact that Africans had made it to Crete in primitive time makes it very obvious that Africans had made it to, you know, North America, Alaska, um, you know, the Olmec areas, on down through America, you know, in more recent times. So we look at the pottery in the Chinese cave that's 20,000 years old. I'm not going to ruin the article for you, you know, this is um, from eight hours ago. Then we go on to the next one, and the next article is about evidence of ancient mariners, and it shows that on the Greek island of Crete there were stone tools 130,000 years old, which means there was an ancient, very extremely ancient empire before there was really people as we know them. So, as the Homo sapiens migrated, and, you know, there's different migration periods, but now we've come to the conclusion, you know, scientists, that is, that they migrated to Australia 60,000 years ago. So, some of the archaeologists would like to suggest that the hand axes were up to as much as 700,000 years ago. Now you gotta understand how science is not necessarily perfect. That's a great example of it. But this is definitely examples of ancient African wisdom that comes from Africa and it is centered in Africa. Now, a lot of you might come to the conclusion, why would I come to the conclusion it's centered in Africa? Well, these stone tools were found in Crete. Many of you do not understand where Crete is. It's, it's on the Mediterranean. It's an island. It's below Greece. It's below Turkey. It's, it's basically the first major stop. Okay, You have the island of Malta, for example. It's one of the stops that you take on the way to Europe. So the fact that you, you're going to find tools... Uh, you know, in a say, you know, in a couple hundred, you know, mile radius of Africa, okay, you, you might even stress it out to 700 mile radius of Africa. That shows you that it's centered in Africa. Now, a lot of you might say, okay, that's not enough proof. That's why I brought in this last article. And it talked about stone tools discovered in Saudi Arabia force archaeologists to rethink human history. This is from January last year. And they talk about the stone tools from 55,000 to 125,000 years old. And they talk about how, you know, these artifacts were found in the desert and blah. And then, you know, in this article, I believe they left out the Nubian style. But in the original, one of the first original articles that came out about it, they said, these are in the Nubian style. If these are the same ones, I believe they're the same ones. I've seen a lot of these different stones. so I could have mixed up, but if they're the same ones, then these are the Nubian ones. So if you look at it, it says, you know, and this article says, anatomically modern humans, those that resemble people alive today evolved in Africa about 200,000 years ago. Until now, most archaeological evidence has supported an exodus from Africa or several waves of migrations along the Mediterranean coast or the Arabian shoreline between 80,000 and 60,000 years ago. So, once you truly understand what is going on here, if you look at human beings as migrations of primitive man and the evolution of that, then you're going to have to concede the point that if there's one superior grouping of people, it's the African one. And it's for very obvious reasons. Look, look how history went. These people are building on the ancient Egyptian Nile Mediterranean Empire. They're building on it. They're spreading out. They're holding it down. And the further you are from that, the less advanced your people were. I would compare it to the Americans who live in the South, 
versus the Americans who live in New York City, for instance. If they evolved in those places respectively over thousands of years, you would find a more innovative, more athletic person in the city. And you would find a less civilized, kind of white, redneck, kind of hill-dwelling person in the country who becomes out of touch and learns a different set of skills, survival skills, to maintain their lifestyle. So to make a long story short, it was because the Europeans left the Mediterranean that made them a less warlike race. I would say the same is true for the Asians and the Native Americans. This proves beyond any doubt that certain groups of people are tougher than other groups of people. And it has to do with the proximity to Nubia specifically. The proximity to Egypt. And when you take into consideration that there was also powerful Nubian tribes that spread out, they also share in that same ancient gene pool. And when you take into consideration that the East Africans do not represent the ancient African gene pool as well as the West Africans, you come to the conclusion that the West African, the modern West African gene pool is the superior genes for hand-to-hand -hand combat. They gave you the tools and they worked the angles into building. Once you understand what martial arts is about, there's, there's a, a fine line between being a mason and a martial artist. It's even called, in art, you're creating a work of art. Okay? Instead of break, building something up, you're breaking something down. You're working the different angles. So the people who have been working the different angles and breaking down material and building pyramids and structures for over 100,000 years, arguably 200,000 years, these people have the superior body type to, to inflict those kind of blows, and they have the superior mind because... It's been ingrained not only in their body from their life and culture, but it becomes ingrained in their DNA, as we see in the Darwinian experiments, as we see in the Galapagos Islands, etc., etc. Thank you.